So welcome to part two of my sea witchery um, sort of mini series, I guess. Um, I kind of want to say something about the first video. Towards the end of the first video, um, I noticed that I had talked about the child's membrane. Um, what I actually meant to say was um, the child's membrane, uh, you know, after birth, after a woman has given birth, sometimes a, the cap can actually be on the child's face. Um, and that's what I meant. Um, it, so it sounded a bit sort of random. So I wanted to do that. I've actually done a part two. Um, it's quite annoying, but for some reason it's just been too um, long to upload to YouTube. So I've had to do it this following night. So it does look like I've travelled, you know, into the future on part two. But, you know. Um, so, um, tools, tools of sea witchery and what sea witches would use. So, shells, let's talk about shells. So, first of all, I have this beautiful shell. This is an abalone shell, and I, I actually think these are gorgeous. They're really beautiful. They've become incredibly popular um, with the, um, you know, rise of the new age, but at least they're easier to get, um, and they're very, very pretty. Um, a lot of people, I mean, in particular, people will use them for, uh, where is it? Like, oh, is it there? Is it there? Yes. Um, smudge sticks. A lot of people will, you know, have them resting in smudge sticks. Um, so, yeah, um, it's, it's, you know, it entirely depends. Some people, a lot of people use um, shells as a way to hold incense, um, to hold charcoal blocks to put incense on to the baits of the spirits of the sea and the wind. Um, so yes, but you know, it's not just that. Um, various shells have different meanings as well. So, you know, um, for instance, uh, a an oyster would, you know, could mean that the shell that could be crushed and put into some, well, very finely, but put into somebody's drink for, a, you know, to make them a little bit lustful of somebody or you know for instance if you wanted to draw money um the sea has always been known as having you know having treasure as ho being a place that holds treasure so for prosperity magic as well um you know you could work with that um pearls as well but anyway loads and loads of different shells uh crabs crabs walk backwards so if you want to do anything that involves reversing then you could do that, you know, if it involves reversing a spell back to somebody else, sending it back, you could work with the, the crab shell, um, or crab claws as well. So yes, uh, cowries, um, cowries, you know, a representation of the female genital area. You get a conch shell, which makes, when you blow it, it makes a sound. So that could be used to work to alarm sea spirits to call them forth if you don't have a ball roarer um you could uh you could work with with the sea spirits calling them out of the conch shell there are some shells as well that actually you know a lot and i'm sure everybody's done this when there was a child um but you put your your ear to it and you can hear the ocean um you can actually do that for divination sit by the side call the sea spirits and say you know i want i want some advice or you know stuff like that I, I want to hear you know um what would be the best course of action for such and such and actually holding the shell to your ear and listening for the sea spirits so then somebody can commune with them so fishing nets um and rope so sorry i've got a little bit of a cold this isn't a fishing rope or a fishing net and um, this is actually a moon cord but it's just a rope essentially and I just wanted to show it just because um, you know whilst I'm talking about the rope um, this is great especially if you are looking to do the famous knot three knots in the wind it's fantastic for that if you think about it especially if it's been from a fishing net fishing nets are used to trap things they're used to entrap things so you could use a part of the rope from a fishing net to trap the wind. Um, not just not just the wind, but people as well. Um, you know, you could throw a, a fishing net around somebody's home. Um, 
you could throw it on a representation of, of somebody on a doll or a puppet to represent that they are captured by your will and then tie it up with your intentions. It goes on. Um, the best thing about working with the rope during the wind as well is the fact that it's left exposed to the elements. So it has the elements in it and it would, you know, this would be um, by the ocean and by the sea. So, um, yes, uh, as well, rope used to make witches' ladders, used to make various different charms, um, stuff like that. So, it, you know, it depends. Um, there's also a saying as well, if somebody feels cursed or somebody feels ill, they're to walk into the ocean and the ocean and to wait for a wave to pass over the person. Um, some, it's nine waves as well, and I'll talk about the ninth wave in a minute, and then they're to emerge and they won't be cursed. Um, if you find yourself uh, cursed or crossed or anything like that, the power of the ninth wave and the power of, you know, immersing yourself and washing yourself in the ocean is probably one of the best courses of action by folklore. So, let's talk about a bull roarer. So there is a tool, I might have spoken about this in part one, but if I repeat myself, I'm sorry. There is a tool that sea witches will also use, not just for the sea, but it's fantastic for this, and it's known as a bull roarer, and it's literally a disc of wood. It's very, very flat, very thin, and it's quite sort of that shape, and it's tied to some string, and the witch will literally just hold hold the rope and wind it wind it around I and mean, it'll make a sound it's like um <laughs> that's my really terrible bull roarer bull roarer impression but you can work with that to actually call and get the attention of the spirits if you don't have one and there's a conch shell, go for it. You can do two in one. Um, but, you know, that can be used to alarm the spirits. That can be used to summon up the spirits of the sea, of the wind, and also the land as well. Um, if you've had the pleasure to actually do a ritual with somebody who has a bull roar, it's, it's very, very cool. Um, fish skeletons and um, just sort of birds or any creatures. Now, the sea, of course, washes up so much life, um, so much life from the shores, and of course it's gonna it's gonna wash up dead things, which is perfect for witchcraft. Um, you know, if you find a, um, a a fish skeleton, you can work with that. You can actually conjure that back up as a familiar, um, and you can tie it to charms that you throw out to sea. So as a fish swims through the sea, it can become a carrier, it can become a messenger to the spirits, to the gods, um, and, and so that's something that you can do. Not just that, but you can also do that in, in you know, um, throughout, the, you know, the world if you feel like you need a familiar, um, you know, to work with. Of course you could have a fish familiar, go for it. Who am I to dictate what you can or can't have as a familiar? Um, but, you know, these these are things that can help you and can aid you. And, of course, various different fish are going to have various different meanings. Um, there is the... Oh, I forgot. It's like a crucifix fish. It's like a fish and it's cru it goes into, like, a crucifix. And, um, oh, it's really old folk charm. But you can actually use that as protection against um, floods, protection against harm, and that is normally hung out. Um, I think it is called a crucifix fish, but that is hung within the home, and it is just like a crucifix. Not just that, but there's a triangular bone within a fish's body that, that can be used as a good luck symbol or as a, um, as a means to deter evil away. Shark's teeth, shark's teeth, um, also known as serpent tongues, believed to be the petrified tongues of serpents. Um, they are, um, you know, carried with somebody as a form of protections. Of course, surfers can wear them as a protection against shark attacks. Um, fortunately, in, in Britain, it doesn't really happen, but, you know, some of my viewers who I talk to regularly, um, you know, it sounds, some of the stories are a little, sound a bit crazy. Um, so, yeah, of course, you can work with various different fish bones and will have different meanings to them. Um, I was trying to think of other 
Sea urchins. Sea urchins can be used for love. They can be dried up and powdered and made into a powder for love. Um, it, it really does go on. There are records of people having dried up fish as charms. Ill, by the way, but, you know, um, if it works, I guess. Um, so, yes, of course, not just fish, but birds. Birds that, you know, are going to be around the um, sort of the coast. Um, now, of course, I'm making use with what I've got. So, this is a duck's feather. It's not, you know, I don't think you're going to find these by the sea. Um, however, you know, it is a bird of water and various different... Various different feathers will have different meanings. Of course, there will be bodies there as well. Bodies of um, pesky seagulls, which are without doubt the the birds. They're like the one animal in the world that I actually do not like. I actually love the majority of animals, but seagulls, I'm just like, ugh. Um, this isn't a seagull claw, by the way. This is a pheasant, but I'm just showing you a bird claw. Um, you know, of course, you could write a petition out in the seagull's um, claw, um, but it would, it's more like a flipper. You can fold it over and bind it and then chuck that into the sea so it would, you know, it would be um, held. It would be something that you'd want to bind. Um, that's as long as the seagull's um, fin, fin, as long as its sort of flippers are over that and its feet are over that, you know, that's something that you can do. Um, of course, you know, wings can be made into smudges. It, it really does go on. But again, seagull feathers, if you find feathers of a seagull, what you can do is you can, when you do the free wind charm with the rope, that's the, the fishing rope, you can knot, as you knot in each um, uh, knot, make a witch's ladder. So put the seagull's feathers in it. Seagulls rely on wind to travel. So, of course, it's going to be a perfect thing. Um, the moment you release it, you're releasing the wind. And, of course, feathers being attributed to air and wind. Um, so, polished glass. Of course, polished glass can be used to um, attract spirits. So, it can be used to put in spirit houses to attract various spirits. So, if you have any vessels... Um, within the house, you want to, um, you know, you, you want to, to, to attract the spirits or keep them entertained, so to speak. You could actually use polished glass. Um, it can also be used for defence and reflection. Um, and I'm sure you'd be able to scry into it. I'm sure there are a lot of other, a lot, all these, these things that I'm saying, I'm just giving minor examples. I am sure there are a lot more uses for these things. Um, and particularly with folk magicians and, and you know, folk witches, um, uh, you know, there are a lot of them that sort of worked with them, how it felt to them as well. Not to sound very cringy or new age, but, you know, if it had a sympathetic link um, to them, if it meant something of that to them, and it was a sympathetic link, that would be good enough. Um, so yes, uh, hagstones. Let's talk about hagstones. I'm gonna have to cut the video soon again and do part three. So of course, hagstones. Um, this hagstone is huge, and I did not find this by the sea. But hagstones are known as wishing stones. They're also used for seeing spirits, and they're also used for defence against being hagridden. And they're also for good luck. And they're also known as wishing stones, um, which of course you can work with these now. Of course, we can imbue these um, with wishes and we can wear them and carry them around with us as charms with perhaps some of the fishing thread that you found. Now, there is a, um, it is a pouch and it's normally by dogfish, sharks and stingrays. And it's known as a mermaid's purse. Now, it's what the baby shark will be birthed from. And these tend to wash up on the shore as well. A little slit open in them and they tend to have sort of pincers the other side and they look sort of like jelly pouches and they're known as mermaids purses for obvious reasons 
um, with the birth in them, there's that sympathetic link to creating something, to creating your wish, to manifesting and birthing your wish into the world. Also, because they're known as mermaids' purses, they're tied to uh, prosperity and they're tied to money and financial gain. Right, part three coming up. <laughs>